little bit of trouble with my kids because uh, they they don't like it. <laughs> they don't like it when I post political things uh, or share my opinion because they uh, they're wise and they don't think confrontation is good. But uh, I have to share a couple things today. We're coming up on midterm elections. For those of you who don't know what that means, it's uh, right now uh, in the executive branch. Well, in the in the uh, legislative branch of the government, we have uh, majority control on the Republican side. So that what that means is there's more Republican uh, senators and congressmen, and then we also have uh, the executive branch, which is led by uh, the president, who is also conservative, uh, and the midterm elections is because the the senators run for six years, president runs for four years, congress congress people run for two years, and so you end up having these midterm elections. And what happens is there's an opportunity for the shifts, the powers to shift from one one side to the other. It's very uncommon for one party or the other to have control of. Uh, the White House and Congress and the Senate and that's where it's been the last two years and uh, the, where I predict it will continue for the next two years and I've been saying that for months even though the media has been trying to tell you that uh, there's gonna be this landslide victory for uh, the Democrats uh, especially in Congress uh, I just don't see that happening and I'll explain why in a minute but uh, I heard <laughs> Gosh, Barbara Streisand and pancakes and coffee, ice cream. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but uh, uh, thankfully she's moving to Canada. Uh, but let me just get to something here. I also heard that NBC fired Megyn Kelly today, which I think is ridiculous. I watched the video. I don't particularly like her position or her or whatever, but I think it's stupid that these networks uh, require their employees to do their bidding. Uh, in the way that they do and they fire them if they don't like what they say. Um, you know, that said, I think everybody on The View should be fired, but that's a whole other story. Um, so, let's see, where do I want to go with this? So I think uh, the reason why I think that we're not going to lose the uh, legislative control on the conservative or constitutionalist side is because I think there's a lot of constitutionalists in this country, and let me just throw some rough estimates. I would say, in my opinion, there's probably a very watch out uh, vehicle stuff significant, on maybe 30% people in the country that would call themselves constitutionalists. There's probably more than that, but uh, at least 30% who would say they're conservative constitutionalists. In other words, they believe the Constitution is for our good. Uh, the 217 or however many years it's been in place has been good for our country. And then there's this, there's always this fairly low percentage of just radical, uh, I'm not even sure what you want to call them. I, I think it, it's, the general term is progressives. Uh, that's a pretty small percentage, you know, maybe 10 or 15%. But what's funny is it always happens to be a very loud group. Uh, they like to be very boisterous, kind of like uh, a lot of them come from Hollywood, which by the way, I heard uh, Alec Baldwin got arrested for punching somebody in New York today. That kind of tells you about the kind of anger that's hanging out in that side of the fence. So I think what happens is these two groups basically volley and vie for the 50 let's say 50 to 60 percent of the people in the middle that are not sure whether they're constitutionalists or even what the constitution says or whether they uh whether they think uh you know whatever they think uh, they're so stuck in their phones they don't know what's going on in the world anyways but so anyway uh, let me just dig in a little bit further because i want to talk about this whole immigration issue and why that's so hot right now anyways but uh the the interesting thing about Hollywood and Barbara Streisand being so upset and stuffing herself and gaining weight on pancakes and coffee ice cream is because she's so upset that uh, Trump was elected president. Uh, anyway, 
here's the thing with these these uh, and the reason why I'm compelled to make this video is people in Hollywood merely portray people like you and I who are actually doing it they're actors they are they are simply just think about that all they're doing is acting like you and I who are actually out doing it we're doing it so to my kids that's why I have the right to make a video like this because I'm I'm doing it I'm actually out there working and paying attention and thinking for myself and trying to uh, make things happen every single month be supportive be a good father and a good contributor to my community and, and all these different things so frankly I don't really care what people in Hollywood have to say uh, on their personal life if I'm friends with them that's great but just because they have a platform because they're good-looking or rich or happen to be decent actors doesn't mean that they they have a rightful opinion in my in my view any more than some of the obviously paid uh, commentators that are in these fake news outlets do, uh, per the example with Megyn Kelly. NBC fires Megyn Kelly because she makes a comment, probably more so because her ratings weren't very good, but because she makes a comment about blackface. I had to ask my wife what blackface was. And frankly, the explanation I got didn't seem like it was... Uh, that big of a deal and I don't mean that to sound racial at all I mean all of you who know me know I'm not racial at all but uh, I, I just don't get it I don't understand and you know, maybe there's somebody who can educate me on that but uh, certainly not the comment that she made was not uh, racist it wasn't intended to be I certainly don't view it as that it, I mean it sounded like it had something to do with a costume or something it was like anyway here's my point behind it if a network fires someone who is supposed to be a media commentator, what does that say for stating an opinion or, uh, or you know, voicing their thoughts? What does that say about the robotic nature of most of the people working in the media? Just think about that. Your job, your paycheck, your ability to support your family is based on whether or not you espouse the position of Mr. and Mrs. NBC or CNN or MSNBC. That's just ridiculous. That's not what media is supposed to be. Media is supposed to be collecting and displaying the facts. The reason why the media doesn't like Trump very much, aside from the fact that media has a generally liberal, negative, uh, socialistic uh, approach or position is because Donald Trump is a comp is a competitor. See, Donald Trump has a Twitter account, and he likes to tweet things, and those go directly to the people, and he doesn't need the media to decipher that for him, and so he is actually a competitor to their cash flow, their position. It's interesting all these rallies going on for the midterms. You don't see any of the any of that on the major news channels because they're freaking packed. They're the conservatives, the constitutionalists are coming out in drones, uh, droves, drones. Somebody can make some fun of that. Uh, and it's uh, it's overwhelming. So they, of course, they don't want to show that. They just want to talk about this caravan coming from Honduras, which is a political stunt, uh, partially funded by illegal. Uh, political dollars donated uh, in the United States and also funded by a, a group in Honduras who's trying to embarrass their government uh, because they're so corrupt and messed up. So the the immigration thing is very interesting because I think we're, you know, the truth is, is that we're all immigrants at one level or another. Even if we were born here, our ancestry doesn't lie here. We are all, we all or originated from somewhere else at some point. And we're all just lucky enough, or most of us are lucky enough, that we get to live in this great country. And uh, it's sad, and it's um, disappointing. I don't know, you could be disappointed for other people who are not Americans, but a Mexican, or Guatemalan, or Honduran, or Costa Rican, or Colombian, they're not Americans. And that's not, that's not up to us. That was, God's decision, I suppose. And I think that we 
this whole uh, immigration issue is coming up right now is because uh, politicians are trying to get uh, trying to get votes. And what's really interesting is even a lot of the liberal politicians right now are agreeing that we need some border security and we need to follow our rules and you know you know as far as immigrating uh, people and all this kind of stuff. Uh, because they know that's what the people want to hear. Open borders don't make sense. It's not fair. It's not uh, healthy. Uh, we all, I think everybody should have an opportunity, a legal opportunity. And, you know, I think that's good and right and something we should all fight for. In fact, I've been saying for years that I think we need significant uh, immigration reform. For whatever reason, no uh, politicians have had the appetite to address that and to really fix it. Uh, I thought Paul Ryan was going to do it this last time around, but uh, it just hasn't happened. I don't really understand why, because it seems like it would be a fairly uh, bipartisan effort to make it happen. We have a labor shortage in this country. The people born in this country don't want to work. My kids, they just want to complain about me posting controversial videos. <laughs> I'm kidding. They're actually pretty good workers. But anyway, you know what I mean. So the whole immigration thing is one that, you know, we just need to come together on as a country and we need to establish, uh, we need to evaluate the current immigration laws to see if they fit the needs of the country. And if they don't, then we need to make changes and then we need to make sure that those changes are actually upheld at the border. And I don't personally think that the wall is the answer. I think the idea of the wall is the answer. The idea of the wall is really just following the rules that are in place, following the laws that are in place. But I think the wall is kind of an archaic way of going about it. I think there's, there's other ways of doing it uh, that'll probably be much less costly in terms of like using technology, using drones, using, uh, you know, different satellites and different things to monitor uh, you know, there might be sections where it makes sense to do walls, but you know, the thing is, is with today's technology, the, the migrants will just build a drone that's big enough to lift a person up over the wall anyway. So the wall is kind of an archaic idea. Just, it's not something that, you know, is really going to work well. There'll still be ways around it. So anyway, bottom line is love you all. And hopefully some of these ideas are are helpful to you and uh, I'm sure my kids will have plenty of comments for me when I get home uh, about whether or not they agree with me posting my political opinions but um, anyway I'll talk to you soon